Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about Kazam, or however you want to pronounce it, I'm going to say Kazam for the sake of making it easier. So basically, as you can see here on the on the screen right now, uh, Kazam is basically something that is a, a container streaming platform using Dockers, and uh, this can do some really cool stuff, right? So the, the, the good thing is it's set up in a couple of minutes. It's really simple to set up. You can set it up anywhere on the cloud. You can set it up on Azure, AWS, GCP. Uh, for the for the, the tutorial today, I'm going to set it up on Oracle, which I just recently uh, actually started looking into. And I find their free tier quite cool. So check it out if you haven't yet. It's pretty nice. Uh, you can also set it up in your own home environment, in your own lab, in your own house or, or whatever. It doesn't require much. Um, so with this having this having said this, uh, let's start uh, and I'll, I'll start by setting up the instance on Oracle Cloud that we're going to use later to install this on. So uh, if my free instance open here already mine is Panavin in Singapore which is the nearest to my location here I'm in Manila Philippines so uh, there's some cool free examination vouchers and trainings at the moment as you can see for the free trial you get basically uh, 400 Singapore dollar which is equivalent to 300 US dollars uh, for free free reuse whatever you want to do with it uh, for 30 days, but there's the always free tier, as you see, always always free, eligible, right? Those actually can run for free even beyond this period, and there's no fee associated to it. It's pretty nice, and at the end of the day, it's just a public cloud like any of the other public clouds. It just requires you maybe to learn a little bit uh, on how to manage it. It's different from, from others, of course, but they all boil with water, right? Let's face it. Okay, let's go. So Kazam requires not much. Let me go back here real quick and and show you the documentation, which is very, very extensive. So it's very simple to pretty much get everything up. So for the installation, obviously <coughs> requirements, right? So it can it can run on on either either of those. Uh, for the sake of today, I'm gonna use an Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, for basic installation, you just use it for your own. Uh, two cores, four gig of RAM, 50 gig of storage. That's pretty much it. Uh, Talk and Docker Compose is going to be installed during the actual install script. So we'll not pre-install this or anything. Just leave it. These are the end user requirements, the different browsers that you can use it with. And we get to that later. Um, obviously, this is a very basic requirement. So if you want to set this up for your company or if you want to play around with it for multiple users, you need to scale, obviously, the, the size of the VM. But this is pretty much good enough for whatever you might want to use it personally. Um, here we would have the standard installation. Uh, standard installation, in our case, the Kazam server will be running on, on the Oracle Cloud. Of course, here we are, the end user. The browser we're gonna use to stream the Kazam desktop, so browsers or whatever through the Kazam server from the cloud, right? So this is a short introduction on that one. So now let's go back and start setting up a, a virtual machine for this. Um, so as you can see, it gives you a few pre-selected things here. Uh, usually it selects the Oracle Linux by default. We're gonna edit this here real quick. We're going to change the image. The image is the most important thing here. We're going to change this to Ubuntu 20.04. And you could have some additional uh, modifications here, but that's good for us. We say select and we're going to change the shape as well. We're going to use the we're going to use the EMT in this case, which works fine. Uh, I'll choose maybe the E4 Flex. We're going to just customize this a little bit. We give this two and we stick to the 16 gig. That's fine. That's good enough. Actually, you just need four here. So maybe I show you how to run this with four. So oh, we know it will work. That's it. Yeah, we select the shape. Then important part is download 
and save the keys because without keys you can ssh into the box later there's no way to create a password or anything so you need keys so you do have the options of paste your public or upload your public key files if you have any any pre prepared keys already for the sake of this we're just going to use it this way and this is pretty much what we need to configure here we leave the instance name and the compartment as it is and with that org it choose the default domain and we say create and we just wait a couple of seconds until this is created. And as you see, uh, we are done with creating the, the instance. We have our information here that we need now, which mostly evolves around the IP address. What we do want to do now is to, we want to make sure uh, SSH is allowed by default, but we do want to make sure that when we are done installing, we'll also be able to um, use it. So in, in the subnet that is created as part of the process here, there's also a default security list and this is the one that we need to modify. So as you can see, uh, in this case, I already have modified it from a previous installation. It's important if this is your first Oracle Cloud installation, you need to create this ingress rule. Otherwise, you won't be able to access it via port 443. So we're good to go on this one. And next step will be now we start the installation uh, of Kazam. Go real quick and open a fresh terminal here. I'm going to make that a little bigger for you guys to see it better. And there we go, SSH minus L Ubuntu for specifying the Ubuntu user. We need the file we specify by minus I, which we kept here for easier sake. And we paste the IP address of the instance and we hit enter and we should be there. There we go. You can see we are now on Ubuntu. So there's a few things we're gonna we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do here, and I'll make this easy. I, I explain the commands, but I'll just run them all at once, so it's gonna be easier. Yeah. So basically, it's very simple. It's all well documented, right? I put the link into that uh, into the description of the video and to to to, to all those. Um, to all those commands and install guides and everything. So basically, we're going to create the swap partition for. Uh, it's recommended to allocate one gigabyte per concurrent session that you expect. For the sake of showing you this today, I'm just going to use simply one gigabyte uh, of swap partition, and this will do. But you just need to plan for your deployment when you actually plan to do more than that. So we're just going to paste it all here and let it run and once this is done we're gonna verify this real quick it's just gonna take a couple of seconds so bear with me a little bit and there we go turn it on and then we verify if it's there i'm oh, sorry of course rock.swaps and we can see this is the one that we just created right so um let's go to the next step which is obviously to so this one we did already so we're just gonna make it persistent so it will also come back when you put hit enter and that's it basically now there's um it's it's very basically just we need we need to download now the uh the package which will be just simply from resources, downloads. And then you can just copy the, the link address here. Then we go back here, we go to the temp directory, uh, we download the installer. This is basically the link. Bam, this should be very fast. <clears throat> There we are. And the next step will be, we're just gonna unpack it and then we're just gonna run the installer, right? So this is the next two steps. So this is also very simple until here. 
Ajá. That's it. Then now we run sudo bash list install.sh. And hit enter. Um, you'll be asked to accept the license agreement. Obviously, there's no other way than to say yes. And now it will start the installation. It go ahead. Okay, and basically this will be the last screen that you will see. So you can tell that it has successfully installed. It gives a lot of information that you might or might not need later on, but definitely keep them. And for today, we're just gonna need the username and password for the admin user and for the user. I'll just copy this part here and paste this into a text editor. So we have this handy on for later and then we're done here in the command line. Next, we're gonna remember what's the public IP here. So we already know this, right? So what happens next is we're gonna basically just um, create a incognito window here for the sake of easiness. And then we're gonna paste, uh, of course, we're gonna have to copy it first. <laughs> Sorry for this. <laughs> So we're gonna go back here, we copy the public IP and we go back here to our uh, new tab and HTTPS and the IP address, hit enter and it should bring us there we go to our Kazam workspaces. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna log in using the credentials here and we're gonna log in first as the admin. So to just get an idea on the admin interface. So copy and of course paste. Same with this one. And we log in. And this is the admin user interface when you see it for the first time, that's what you will see. So now I wanna show you um, a little bit of browser integration because that's one of the really cool things. So you can just simply right click in any link and say open in Kazam, it will spin up a new Docker instance with the browser, stream the app to your browser on your device. And once you're done checking the link, which might be malicious or not, right? Once you're done, you just explode the session and there's no harm to your physical machine. There can be no harm ever. It will be completely safe to open links like that. It's really good for browser isolation. Okay, uh, so for the browser extension, uh, I, I, I'll just use a, a Chrome without any user logged in. So the browser extension is pretty interesting because aside from, of course, uh, doing browser isolation, which I will show shortly, you can also stream entire images uh, from Kazan to your browser, which is pretty cool if you think about it, right? So uh, it, it can protect your privacy uh, uh, to some extent. Don't, don't take it for too much of a protection, but it, it can. Uh, it can protect you from malicious links when you just use the browser isolation by right clicking any link and saying open in Kazam, it will spin up uh, an image in, in Kazam and you basically don't run anything on your actual machine. So that's quite safe. Once you're done with the session, it will just explode, it will be gone. It will be completely uh, eliminated, right? So that's also pretty nice. And of course, it's accessible from anywhere if you set it up somewhere on the cloud like we did here in Oracle Cloud, right? So by to, for doing this, we need a few things. First of all, of course, we need the, we need the extension. So we go to more tools, extensions, and then we go to the web store. And here we search for Kazam. Open in isolation, that tells you everything you need to know, right? So we add this to Chrome, add extension. Give it a few seconds and then we don't want to turn on anything here at this moment, but what we will do is we'll pin it here. So we have it here. We say options. So Kazam URL is the URL that you used earlier to log into your Kazam uh, web interface. We say new tab here and leave it otherwise the same. 
that's pretty much it. So when you click any link now, as you can see, already it will say open link in Kasam, which is what we're going to do. So it will bring you back here to the login prompt. This will be only for the first time, actually. So we'll go now and use the user instead of the admin. So copy, paste, copy, paste, login. And it will ask you for the first one. Obviously, there's no default image selected. You could either do that ahead of time as the admin. You can select the default image for all users, but you can also do it just now. So for us, what we want to what we want to use by default is let's say we're gonna use the brave browser. Okay. And the rest we can pretty much leave it as this. This we leave it as is as well and that's pretty much it it's saved and uh, we can close this now it will now when you so when you go again uh, to extensions and say open in kazam it will open a new link it will already know that your default is brave and you're logged in don't you show tips on startups it's i'll leave it up to you if you want to leave this or not but you say okay and then we just close this one and there we go. Now within our Chrome browser, now we have a Brave browser. So, and also as you can see, so if you're going here, say ipinfo.io, you'll see my current Philippine IP address, right? Now, if you do the same here, Sorry, hey, sorry, typo. <laughs> there we go. You'll notice. Ah, okay. There we go. Singapore Oracle Cloud Corporation. That's because now we are streaming from our Kazam server on the Oracle Cloud. And that's as easy as it is. And it's really simple, right? I mean, and you can do that either on your own network, on your own dedicated Linux machine. You can do that on any of the clouds, Google Cloud, Azure, AWS, wherever. It's simple as that. So the last thing I want to show you today is how to enable the Kali image Linux, uh, Kali Linux image on uh, Kazam, which is kind of there, but by default not enabled. So I'm going to show you how this is enabled. For this, we're going to go back here to our, to our Kazam. So right now, by default, as you can see, there's no There's no Kali Linux to be seen here, right? So desktops, there's only Ubuntu and CentOS. So what we're going to do now is we sign out here as the user. And we sign out here, sign in here as the admin. Which will bring us to the admin interface. And here um, we're going to go to the images sections. Uh, let's just look here for Kali. And there you go. So as you can see, Kali is here. It's just not enabled, right? So how we enable it is by simply doing the following. You're just going to click Edit here. Toggle on the Enabled here. And then we're going to do one more thing, which is the uh docker run config override what we want to do is we want to be able to use the root user in kali and we have to specify this here we do that by simple json configuration so in uh we're just gonna uh, type in a double quotes and then a colon and then root specify this okay this is it we're gonna say submit that's it yeah and now if we are going to if you're going here so you see images session staging managers agents all is here right images go back to the workspaces 
and we're gonna go to desktop and there you go there's Kali Linux so right now in the background this is downloading the image uh, which can take a couple of seconds so let's just visit this again uh, as a user in a couple of minutes and as you can see it's done uh, I'm in the meantime switch to the user instead of the admin so you can also see my session that I started earlier to browse you can see this here in your active sessions and you can actually go there and delete it this will delete the running session will completely destroy the docker image that was spun up for this for the brave browser and it's like nothing ever happened we go back here to the desktop and we'll just to show uh, bring up this kali linux now so we say launch session and this is still all within my local machine and one, two, three, four, five. There you go. There's your Kali Linux completely, completely separated from your machine running on Oracle Cloud streamed to your desktop via Kazam. And for the sake of showing the same, we go to ipinfo.io once more and you can see Oracle. That's where we are. This is our IP that we have here. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And the Kali Linux is pretty much the same as any other Kali Linux, right? So you see, so you have all the features in here that you have on your standard Kali Linux as well. And same as with the browser, once you're done with this, right? So let's say we go back to our user session or user dashboard, right? We leave this side, you go back to the user dashboard. This keeps running, right? You can still resume this until it's expired, or you can just say delete. And it is gone. Um, a few other things that are notable here, let's just say the Tor browser, for example, right? You can just get the simple bash uh, terminal, right? So got it. If you just need a terminal for whatever you want to run, right? That's it can do whatever you like to do in this. You can check your IP address. You'll see that it's just a local one spun up by Kazam. And with this, I think uh, this is pretty much it for today. Kazam is pretty, pretty amazing. It does a lot of things and it's very simple to set up as you have seen, right? So maybe in one of my next sessions, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper on what else can you do with Kazam that is not only for yourself, but also in a small company setup or even a larger company setup. To, to, to share workspaces between teams. It's pretty, pretty nice. And with this, I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you all again soon in my next video. Take care, bye-bye.